this class, um, as I said, is on descendancy research. So what is descendancy research? Well, we want to take our, and we want to take one of the outside, one of the um, ancestors that go kind of far back, and we want to look down at descendants. That's pretty much what descendancy research is. So not only are we following our direct line, we will actually go into um, our collateral lines and uh, be looking for our cousins as well. Um, this is great if you are, if you have pioneer heritage or if a lot of people are working on your tree and you feel like your direct line is pretty, pretty worked on, um, this is actually great for you because you can start doing research and finding other people that you're related to, but just not directly. Okay, so for this class, I am going to focus on Family Search and Pazilla. Okay, so I'm going to start with the Family Search, and this is my great grandfather here. I'm starting with him. Sorry about that. So whoever your head person is, um, you're going to want to take your line as far back as about 1800, maybe a little bit further. So I'm going to follow James Moyer here. Open him up. And his father, James Moyer, born in 1797, this is a good one to work on. What I'm going to do is I'm going to look at his descendants. And you don't want to go too far back um, because then you end up getting into like difficult records in the 1700s. You also don't want to go too recent because then you're not going to find as many descendants. And if your goal is to find people to take to the temple, you're not going to want to um, fall into that group of people who were born before 110 years because um, then you'll have to receive permission. So um, I'm going to click on James. So find your ancestor and click on him. And then what you're going to do is you're going to click on tree. This is going to put him as the first person on the tree. OK, so you can see here, here he is, the focus person. And right now we're in the landscape view. So this means we're going to look at his ancestors and just one line back. So what I want to do is I want to change this to descendancy. So up in this left-hand corner, you're going to want to go down to descendancy, click. Okay, so this is the descendancy view of the tree. We have James Moyer as the top, and here are his three children. Now you might have, I'm going to go over here to options on the right, you might have portraits automatically selected. Usually that's the default. And you can see that when the portraits are there, that it takes up a lot more space. So go over to where it says options in the top right, click on it, and then you're going to want to unclick on portraits. That's going to condense it more, because we're going to take it down a few more generations. Up here, where it says generations, I'm going to click on four. I'm going to look at four generations, uh, below James Moyer. Um, all right, so here's our descendancy view with James Moyer. If you want to follow these arrows, you can see here this one is the first line with James Moyer. And then this arrow takes you down the second generation, these children, the third one, grandchildren, and if I click on this, I can go even further. Okay. Um, if you look at it, you can see the people with arrows mean that there's somebody else. There's a child. There's another line of descendancy. But if you have a plus sign with no arrows, then that means that um, this person's line just stops. Okay, it doesn't mean that he didn't get married or have children. It's just not on family search. Okay, so these can be areas of focus for research. So um, if you want to find their families. Okay, so let me get you 
that we're working on here. You want to look over here to options. We can see what the icons mean. So Green Temple, Request Ordinances, Record Hints. I'm going to click on Research Suggestions. So it's going to update my tree. I'm going to have to click on Four Generations again. Okay, and you're going to see all these icons over here. Um, what you want to do, I always say go easiest to start off with. You want to get to the, the low-hanging fruit, as they call it, uh, the green temple. So if somebody has a green temple, it means that you can reserve the temple work. Okay, so if I click on it here, you can see it's all set up, and I can actually click on request and, and reserve them. But what I always say is, we don't want to just automatically do that. We, we want to make sure this person really existed, for one thing. Um, we want to make sure his information is accurate. Uh, I would like to see a couple sources to verify his information and his relationships so that he's in the right place in the family. Um, yeah, and so really through that whole process of finding sources and looking more closely, I feel like that's how you get that fulfillment of doing family history to begin with. <laughs> I think you, you grow closer to the person as you investigate more, and it's just not a name that we're requesting. So, um, so the way I want to look more closely at him is I'm going to click on his name. And right off the bat, I can see he's born in 1889, so I know that um, this will be okay to do temple work for. I'm going to click on person. I'm going to open him up. And we, we have an exact birth date, an exact death date, which is great. But unfortunately, we don't have any sources to verify that. And then if I look up here, under sources, we have no sources at all for the person. So I think I want to do a little bit of research and, and find more about him. Um, so family search has it set up here where you can search directly onto the records and on family search by clicking here. Um, you can search ancestry, find my past, my heritage. These are all the sites that you get free with your LDS account. Um, so if I were to do research for him, I would probably start with family search first and see if there's any records to verify this information. And I would just kind of go down depending on where he's from. I'm just going to take a look at him. Here he is with his wife and kids. So, you know, maybe I could find a census record, 1891 census. Um, or actually, maybe if I want to verify this whole family, um, I would maybe look into some later censuses. Okay, so I don't want to automatically reserve them. I think I'll do some more research. But if you don't want to do the research, if you want to find someone that's ready to go, then I say let's go back. We'll go back to our descendancy chart. I'm going to click on four generations again. And then you just, just look for another one. And just kind of go down and see who has a green temple, who may be ready to, to do. Okay, so Let's say I've gone through all the green temples. Um, the next thing is I would kind of look at these other icons. Like I said, if you go up here to options, it'll tell you what they are. So record hints. If someone has a record hint, that means that Family Search has found a source that matches the information for your person. It doesn't mean that it's correct. You have to look look at it, but this can be um, a jump for you to find more information for your person and um, being able to reserve the temple work. So this record is Alexander III, British Newspaper Archive Family Notices. So if I click on it, it's going to show me a little bit of what this is. It's an obituary. Uh, has the date of the obituary and the event place. It's not really giving me any other information, birth or death, or even other people. Sometimes obituaries will have more people listed. Now, what I would want to do too, which you can do, um, you can actually open up 
this obituary, look at the image, sometimes there's more information on the image than what was indexed. So it, it's definitely worth opening it up and looking more closely. But let's say this actually had information that um, would help build up my person and verify maybe this 1854 date here, then I would uh, attach that and I would, you know, see if temple work needs to be done, um, maybe if there's more people that, um, that are on that obituary that I could add people that aren't even in the system yet. So that's where hints can take you. Now research suggestions, a lot of them are going to say no, no sources attach. Family Search really wants you to find sources. It really wants you to get the information verified. So that can just kind of give you a little heads up on who needs the source. And sources, like I said, just with the hints, um, they can take you to finding more people that you can add to your tree. Uh, the other one was data problems. And I'm not seeing any here. If I click on some more generations, then you know, more, you're going to have more pop-up. So here's a data problem. I click on that. It says it's miss, missing a standardized death place. So standardization, that can be a whole other class, but it's important to have your information in the standard that family search sets. So you want the date, the month written out fully, and then the year. And then the place you want um, to be in the format that FamilySearch has um, stored. So once you have the standardization set, then your information is going to um, go over to FamilySearch and they're going to possibly match you up with uh, more sources that they have in their database. Okay, so that, that's how you use this descendancy view, the icons. So what I'm going to focus on is, I'm going to kind of take you through a little case study, I guess. And we're going to, I'm going to show you how you can find a person by using this process. So I kind of went down from the top as I was searching for people to add to family search. And I actually kind of had a hard time going through all these people until I got down to Helen Moyer. Now, Helen Moyer, she has two children, you can see. Um, but one's born in 1888, one's born in 1894. They both have her last name. So that tells me that they were probably illegitimate. So I want to take a look and see if maybe we can find more about this family, if there are any more kids, if she ever got married. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on her name. And then I'm going to click on person. And this is going to open up her person page on family search. Okay, so I'm going to take a look at her. We have a birth. We have one source. I'm going to take a look at that. Okay, so her, the source verifies her birth date and her parents. But I'm looking more for descendants, for her family. I could look at this record hint. I would always suggest to look at your hints first before anything else. This is a census record. The problem is on family search, um, the census records only have this index portion for her only, and it doesn't put her with the whole family. If I want to see an index census record from Scotland with the whole family, I'm going to want to look on ancestry or find my past. Okay, so just going to look down here at her family. Here we have Helen, and here we have the two ch children. So, like I said, we're going to go up here and do some research. And I'm just going to go directly to find my past because I know that they have really good census records and they have a really good search engine. I'm going to click on that. What it's going to do, it's going to take um, this information for Helen Moyer that's on Family Search, and it's going to use that to conduct the search on Find My Past. So I'm going to say okay. I'm 
uh, leaving family search. I'm going to find my pass. I'm already signed in, but at this point, if you were not signed in, then you would have to go ahead and, and click on sign in. Okay, so here are the results for Helen Moyer. And I've already been through this. I kind of went through some of these census records, and I couldn't find anything until I got to this 1891 census in Fraserburgh, Aberdeenshire, Scotland. I'm going to click on that. Okay, so this is what we have. Helen Moyer, household members. So we see the whole family. James and Barbara, those are her parents. Peter is her brother. So this helps me to verify this is the Helen Moyer that I'm focusing on. And now we have two kids beneath her. One of them, Mary Ann Moyer, if you remember, I can go back here. Okay, we have Mary Ann Moyer. We don't have a John Wallace Moyer because he was born after the 1891 census. But we have a Barbara Moyer, and she's born in 1882. And the way this looks, when you look at it, um, looks like Barbara would probably be her daughter, right? Well, if you go to scotlandspeople.gov.uk, um, you can do searches for birth records, marriage records, um, for a fee. And what I found when I went on that website was Barbara's birth records. Barbara Milne, so named after her grandmother. Um, so she's illegitimate. There's her birth date, place. And here we have the name, maiden name, surname of mother, and we have Isabella Moyer. So if I go back to Family Search and I look for Isabella, here she is. Isabella is Helen's older sister. So Barbara is not Helen's daughter. Barbara is Isabella's daughter. So this is great. I've, I've found the mother. I found a, a new person. And I'm going to go ahead and add her to Family Tree and do the work for her. So I would go to Isabella, and I would just add her through there. OK, so just let me take you back to the tendency chart. So this is how using descendancy, this descendancy view um, chart, this is how you can find new people, find new cousins. So there's an example of how you can do it. Okay, and that's, this is all using family search. This is all free. And it's a pretty simple way of, of doing it. But now, if you want to go a little further, um, we're going to go now to Pazilla. OK, so Pazilla.org, there is a basic service for Pazilla. And then there's a premium service for a fee. It's about $40 a year. So basic service actually gives you quite a bit. Um, I'm going to demonstrate how I found Barbara using the basic service. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to sign in. Oh, and also to um, add, if you're at a family history center, you can use the premium service for free. So go ahead and sign in if you're following along. I'm going to click on here. Um, once again, I start with my great-grandfather, John Wallace. Uh, when you sign in, it's going to automatically put you as the first person, though. So here, the first person starts here at the bottom. If I click on it, then this little screen here just stays still. You can see what it includes, his birth, death, just some vital information, and then options on viewing him, descendants, ancestors. You can open him up in Family Tree. Um, you can log him. I'll talk about that later, and you can do a search for him. Okay. And what we're looking at here is uh, an ancestral um, chart. So these would be his parents. We have his mother, his father, the next generation, and then so forth. It doesn't go very far. This is a very small tree. Yours might look a lot bigger. 
Um, the pink, obviously, are the female, the blue, the male. And I'm going to go into all this stuff on the left in the, a little while. Um, but what I'm going to show you is the way that I found Barbara um, for using Pizzilla. So once again, just like we did on Family Search, we're going to find uh, one of the ancestors, one of your ancestors, who was born around 1800. So that was James Moyer that I uh, found on Family Search. And he's born about 1797, so this is the one I, I used. So what I do is I click on him, and then I'm going to click on Descendants. Okay, so now you're going to get a chart looking like this. Again, mine is kind of there. Yours might have a lot more lines coming out. Um, it kind of looks like one of those spirographs that we used to do with kids, you know. <laughs> and what we have here is James Moyer, the person of focus. If you follow this yellow line, that's going to take me all the way back. If I kept going, it would take me all the way back to me if I chose more generations to view. Um, you're going to have the kids. His kids are right here. And then their kids and their kids and their kids. So it's a great way to view a whole bunch of people at one time. And like I said, if I wanted to view more, I could click over here on the left. I could click generations and uh, choose up to 12. Um, I think they suggest not to do more than six at a time. It kind of overloads the system. So um, I'm just going to stick with four for now. Okay, so how did I find Barbara? Okay, so what is this chart telling me? This chart is showing me where do lines stop. And where lines stop is where I can focus. I can look for family members. I can look for children and, and just make these lines keep going. So you can see we have quite a few lines here that stop. Okay. Now the one that I had focused on was Helen. You can see Helen only has the two kids coming out. So if you only see a couple lines coming out of a person, then that can show that can you know say to you, oh, this is um, somebody that might have had more children. So maybe we can find some more. So I clicked on Helen, and then what I would do is. I would want to see her on Family Search to begin with, see what's going on. So here I would click View in Family Tree. Okay, so here we are back to Helen Moyer, to her person page, everything we looked at before. And we can just kind of go forward with that whole process of research where I can check the sites, go to Find My Past find the census record, and, and find that, that um, niece of hers, Barbara. Okay, so I, that was the way of finding her through Pizzilla. Now let me tell you a little bit more about Pizzilla. Um, so that person I found, Barbara, um, I did all that through the basic features of Pizzilla. So I didn't have to go to the premium version to do that. All I did was I found her, which you know, like I said, she was a target person to me because of you know, these two kids. You could have choose, chosen any of these other people because they have no kids. Um, that's all done through the basic feature. You just click on them, and then you view them in Family Search, and then just try to find more about them. Okay, but if, um, if I wanted to do premium, then um, that's what these gray icons are here. But first, let me go over some of those icons that you get uh, for the basic uh, version. Um, if I want to change an ID, if I wanted to change my starting person, and I had the ID from Family Search, um, I would just write it here, and then I would click View Descendants or Ancestors if I wanted to view Ancestors. Okay. Um, this Die Before 16, so these bottom three buttons are what you get on the, the basic version. Uh, die before 16, you can see they show up here, these little yellow blocks. Now, why do we want to know about that? Um, if we're looking for descendants, um, if the person died before they were 16 years old, most likely they didn't have children. So now I know now, okay, this is not someone I'm going to focus on. I'm going to focus on the ones that don't have yellow. 
Uh, the gray blocks born before 110 years, so born within the last 110 years. Um, here we are. There's some right over here. Uh, we don't want to focus on them because if there are distant cousins and they were born before 110 years, we're not going to be able to do the temple work. So um, focus on the people who were born more further back. Um, and then we have the option here for targets. If I click on that, you can see these red boxes have appeared. So targets are where lines stop. Those are areas of focus. So if you couldn't already tell, that's where the lines stop. These um, red markers here are going to highlight that for you. If you have a lot more lines coming out of your focus person, then this would probably be a lot more helpful. And when you're on targets, you can actually um, specify what you want. So if I wanted, let's see. OK, let's say I wanted um, people who were born in Raffin. Raffin is a city in Scotland. Did you see how some of those red blocks disappeared? I'm going to do it again. OK, so that's before I type it in. And as you're typing, you'll see them disappear. OK, so now the ones with the red blocks are only the people who were born in Raffin, Scotland. OK, now if I wanted people who were born within a specific time period, then I can type that in here too. So let's say 1850 to 1860. OK, so you can see uh, more people disappeared. So the only ones that are left are the people who were born in Raffin um, and within this time period, 1850 to 1860. Okay. So that can be really helpful in your research. And if I unclick it, then it all disappears. Okay, so this is how, these are things that you can use in the basic uh, version, basic of uh, Pazilla. So one other thing here, um, if I want to only focus on one line, if I wanted to hide the other ones, like here we have uh, my direct one, my yellow one. Let's say I didn't want to look at these ones. Um, if I clicked on this person, and then I went over here to the left, hide and show tree. If I clicked on it, it's going to make it disappear. And this is where it was. So what this little plus sign is, that's a tree, that whole tree that came down from her, that is all hidden now. So let's say I wanted to do it to this one too. I click on it, and then I click hide, show tree. OK, so now. The only line coming down that I can view is my own. Well, and the, this one as well. So from this one sibling, I'm only viewing their tree. If I want to bring them back, I can click. And then to the left, click Hide Show Tree, and it's going to bring it right back. Click on the plus, Hide Show Tree. OK, so now they're back. OK, so that's, that's it for the basic version. Um, now the premium version, we're just going to get a few more options of ways of viewing our chart. Uh, what I want to do first is I'm going to change the ID. I'm going to find someone in my tree that actually has a lot more descendants. So I'm changing it to George Unwin. I'm going to type in his ID number. M five M three L B B. Okay, I'm gonna click View Descendants. Okay, so this is George Unwin. He's like my great grandfather, about six or seven times, and this is him in the middle with all of his descendants. And this kind of has this is a bit more full. As you can see, so this might look more like yours. I don't know how full everyone else's is, but 
Um, this is going to show us some more um, people, and it's going to demonstrate better these premium features. Okay, so the first one I'm going to look at is hints. So hints is orange. You can see it's kind of doing a scan through the whole tree. It used to be a lot slower. <laughs> that was pretty fast. So everyone that's coming up with an orange square has a hint. So like this guy here, I click on him. Did you see what happened here on the left? So all the hints that he has just um, showed up right here. Now these are hints, these are the same hints that you see on Family Search. So when, when you go on your person page and there's that little blue icon that says hints, that's what you're going to see. If I open them up on Family Search, this is what I would see. Okay? So from here, I can click on each, each hint or each, yeah, each source. And I can uh, compare and uh, see if I want to put it right into my family tree. So I'll show you. If I click on the first one, it's going to take me right to that family search screen where you have your uh, record here on the left and you have your tree here on the right. Okay, so um, I would just have to look at it closely and see if this is um, the a correct source, and then I would attach it or not attach it. So let's say that my focus is I just want to find people. Like I don't really want to go through all these hints, you know, just to add hints to people. Let's say I just want to find new people to add to my tree. So a quick way we can do this is if I use this search 10 hints option. And I would suggest, if you're looking for people to add to your tree, I would suggest typing in census. Because if you find your person on a census record, um, likely that you could find more family members, brothers, sisters, more children. Um, so I would type in census. Uh, obituary would be a, a good one, too. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to search 10 hints. I'm going to click on this here. And watch, before I click on it here, watch what happens on the top here where all the tabs are. Click on that. Okay, so you see how it opened up 10 tabs. So these are 10 hints. And what I want to do is I just want to look through it pretty quickly and, and see if there's anyone I can add to my tree. So once again, on the left we have our source, our census record. And on the right is um, our tree and the people on our tree. So what I would want to look for is um, aha, yeah, this add little tab here. Um, if you see an add, that means there's somebody here on the left that's, actually, that's not here on the right on your tree. So someone's on the, in the source in the census that's not in your tree. But um, you want to look at it closely. Um, you don't want to just add people without understanding it. Sometimes it might not line it up just right and you might have a person that actually is somebody on your tree. But um, this is going to lead me to possibly finding people. So here we have Jane W. Unwin, born in 1875. And we don't have her here on the tree. Annie Unwin, 1877, is not on the tree. And then we even have a sister-in-law, too, that might not be on the tree. We can't tell on this view. So apparently they forgot the girls on the tree. <laughs> so um, like I said, I, I wouldn't automatically add them. What I would do is I would go to the record. I would look at it more closely. I would maybe try to find another census record, too. And then I would go through the process of adding them to the tree. But th I mean, this is, this is a hit. This is what you want to look for if, if that's your goal to um, adding more people to your tree. You want to look for these add tabs. So let's say this wasn't a hit. I could just close it. Even without attaching the source, if maybe you just want to you know, find people to add and you might not really care so much about adding the source to the person. So you can close it and then it'll just take you to the next one. Close it. Um, just kind of keep going through and looking. 
Here we go. This is that same one again. I'm going to go this way. So Henry Jackson. Okay, so here's a James Jackson that's not on my tree. So he fits right in the middle there too, 1861, in between 1859 and 1863. So that's, that's a great one I'd want to look at. Just keep going. And just keep going until you get through all 10 sources. And then once you've gotten through the 10th one, you can click Search 10 Hints again and it'll open up the next 10 hints. So you can just kind of keep going until you get through <clears throat> all of the hints. Okay, so that's hints. Uh, next one is sources. So sources, it's pretty obvious you're just going to look for people <clears throat> on your tree that have sources. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so um, this is this tree actually has quite a few sources. Now, wh why does this matter? Why do I want to see who has sources? Well, these people who are um, end of line people, like this person here, where her line ends, um, she has a source, and sometimes um, everything on that source doesn't get transferred onto the tree. So maybe the source was attached to her, but they didn't actually see that the source had other people on there too that you can add to the tree. So that's, that's how you can use this feature in order to find more people. You click on it, you just scroll over them. They pop up here on the left. So what you would do is you would just go through each one and see if you can find more information for your person. <laughs> Um, you also now have the option to put in source type. So if I wanted to just do census or birth, I could type that in there. Okay, uh, the next feature is search. And search is a pretty teal color. So nothing is going to show up on the chart until you actually type something in. So let's say I just want to see people with the last name Jackson. Okay, so you can see on the right here, all the Jacksons have that teal color. And then let's say I want to narrow it down to that 1820 to 1860 time period. Okay, so the, these, are <coughs> excuse me, these are who I have left. And um, if this is your focus, then this is the way to get right to it, to get to that Jackson family and to this time period. So you can do a lot of different things. Um, as you can see here, you don't have to type a name. It can also be an ID number. Um, so let's say that um, you kind of lost somebody. Like you have their ID number, but you don't know exactly how they connect to the starting person. Um, you can type it right in there and then It'll just highlight it, like let's say it was this person. And then with this chart, you can see that line that takes you all the way back to the starting person. So a great feature. You can also um, search with the place as well. Okay. Uh, the next one is My Changes. And this one is Purple. Okay, so not too many. Just right here, and it makes sense that the purple, um, which are my changes, so they're using my login, um, and they're saying, okay, you made the change, these changes, you made changes to these people. So whatever I did, if I added information, if I standardized, um, whatever I did to this person, um, it's saying I made a change. So here, it makes sense that you're going to see that with the direct line. If you're wondering why there's two yellow lines, <laughs> um, that's because apparently um, these two brothers, James and Joseph, uh, both claim that they um, had the same daughter. <laughs> so that's something that needs to be fixed. That's why I have two lines here. Um, so just showing up the changes on this one, though, and uh, the 
benefit of this is, let's say, you just want to look at what you've already done. Okay, this is something I've already worked on. Maybe now I want to go into another line, which I haven't worked on. Um, or maybe I want to review some of the changes I made. Um, there could just be different reasons why you want to do that. Okay, and then we have possible duplicates, which is a lavender color. And you can see here on the bottom, we've got a few with possible duplicates. And again, this is just saying on Family Search, um, these people have a possible duplicate. If I click on the person, it's not going to direct me to anything here um, in regards to possible duplicates. What I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to view this person in Family Tree. And then on the person page, um, I should see possible duplicates with how many. And then I should be able to um, compare and, and see if I need to merge. So this is kind of a cleanup feature more. So if you just want to clean up this tree, make sure you don't have any duplicates, then I can do that just with the ones that pop up here. All right, the next one we have is ordinances. To kind of slow down a little. When you have these open squares, um, that means it's still searching through. You want a, a filled in square is what is going to uh, be the actual target. So we could give it a minute, or we could try again. OK, here we go. I'm going to get back to that person again. I'm going to change the ID. I'm going to go to M5M3LBB. Click on View Descendants. Now I have to remember where I was. <laughs> OK, so oh, we were doing ordinances. That's kind of what jammed it up. I'm going to click on Ordinances. There we go. 
Okay, can you see that one little guy? <laughs> Might be kind of hard to see for you, but right here. We have one person that has ordinances to preserve genes. Okay, so again, like with possible duplicates, I'm not going to be able to do anything more from here. I'm going to have to go to Family Tree, view him, and just going to take a look at him and hopefully find a surname for him. <laughs> and some other information so we can do the temple work for him. But just like Family Search, um, it just gave me the ability to see just, you know, with all these descendants coming from uh, George Unwin, I can see who out of these descendants going four generations has temple work to be done. That's ordinances. Uh, next thing, uh, tracking and status. Now this has to do with a feature on Pizzilla called log. So I'm going to go on that. And actually, let me go back. So first I need to log a person. So this means I'm just putting him on that other page I clicked on. And it's, it's going to um, provide a way for me to keep track of them. Let's say I want to log Catherine Unwin. Why would I want to log her? Maybe I want to keep track of research I've done. I don't want to go back and repeat the research. Maybe I want to um, keep track of uh, people I've sent uh, temple work to be done for. Um, there could be lots of reasons why I'd want to log a person. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to log this person. You can see here, um, it put her ID number, her name, uh, her lifespan, and these little markers here, one, two, three, four, five, you can decide what each of these mean. Um, let's say one, that's going to give her a little red triangle. I could, in my own uh, mind, I could, one could be, um, I done all the research I can for her and there's no more, there's nothing left to be found. <laughs> that could be what red means. I could say purple means um, still working on her, still needing to find, uh, search through more databases. And yeah, each one could just mean whatever you want. Um, you could say black means um, my sister Kathy has um, her temple card. So everyone with a black triangle my sister has. So it could be anything you want. Um, let's just give her, I'm going to give her a teal triangle. And here I can kind of put some notes next, meaning like, okay, what am I going to do next for this person? Let's say it's been a month since I've researched her. Um, I know that I still need to find death record. That's the next thing I want to do for Catherine. So that's just my little note there. Here you can just put um, searched census records. You can kind of keep track. And this just kind of keeps going and going. You could write as much as you want on this field. Uh, right here, this is where the temple works should show up. Okay, she's on the log now. Now let me show you what happens on the chart. Okay, because she is on the log, she's being tracked. So when I click on tracking, which is brown, you can see the brown square comes over her. She's the only one who's in my log, so she's the only one that gets a brown square. And status, so that's the, the little triangles, the one through five. You click on that, you can see her little status uh, icon there that I chose for her. Um, so let's say you have a whole bunch of people on your log. Um, you're going to see brown squares all over. You'll see the different color triangles. And this will help you pinpoint um, whatever information, how it uh, goes with the log you created. It's a very um, flexible thing. It's something that you create for yourself. You set the standards and the parameters. OK, I think that is it for the, the premium features. Um, you can see you get a, a lot more ability to work with your tree and, and you know, view it in different ways, see where, where you can work, how you want to do it. Um, 
So Pavilla is great for that, and the premium features are great for that. Up here, if you want to learn more, you can click on How To, and that's going to show you some videos and tutorials and instructions, FAQs. Um, clicking on Chart will take you back to yourself as the starting person. And that is Priscilla. Um, so on the description <laughs> for my class, there is also um, Relative Finder. Unfortunately, Relative Finder for me um, does not work very well. When I go on it, I only see my daughter <laughs> as a match. So um, what Relative Finder does, this is a uh, site that uh, BYU has put together, this Family History Technology Lab. Um, what they do is they take uh, you with your family search information, your ancestors, and they match you up with other people who uh, either sign up for the database or just in the database, like famous people. So you can find uh, presidents that you may be related to or uh, just um, important figures in the church or just um, in the country. Uh, so you can create groups, and you can um, match up with people in your ward, your state. Um, we've done that. And so for some reason, I, I used to match up with a bunch of people, and something changed, and I'm not able to. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to show you a video about it so you can get an idea of what it's about. Hi, this is Allison Mansfield with OnGeniality.com, and I'm going to show you a fun program that's jokingly referred to as the Gateway Drug to Family History. Relative Finder is a program that was developed by Tom Cedarberg at BYU. It's been around a while, but has a new look and some new features, and kids love it, and it's free. Relative Finder shows relationships between users and other people alive or deceased. To use Relative Finder, you'll need to have a family search account and tree and you'll log in with your family search account. If you don't have a family search account, don't let that discourage you. Family search is free, and for most people, it's easy to build a tree. You don't import a GEDCOM, you just link to people who are already in the system. So at most, you'll hopefully only be adding yourself and maybe your parents or grandparents before you link to ancestors who are already in the tree. So I have an account, I'm just going to sign in. Relative Finder won't have my family search password, but they will download my tree. And if I don't want Relative Finder to store my tree, I'll delete my Relative Finder account. When I log in, Relative Finder will show my relationships, and the closest relationships will be displayed first. So you can see I've got a couple of sibling relationships, a couple of children. Family search doesn't let Relative Finder store information on living people. So Relative Finder doesn't know if my son is my nephew or my son. They see my deceased parent has a grandchild, and they tell me that grandchild is either my son or my nephew. So Relative Finder will return relationship results for any relationship you have with someone in a public group. At first, these groups were primarily of interest to Mormons. So there are LDS pioneer groups, prophets, apostles, and cart companies. But they branched out and added groups of greater diversity, including Catholic saints and popes, authors and poets, classical composers, got U.S. presidents, all sorts. Relative Finder works best for people with European descent, but they keep adding interesting ancestral lines, and it's becoming more and more diverse. On Relative Finder, you can join a group. So I have joined a group of neighbors. Someone created the group and then invited us to join. You can create your own group. I created a group for my family and then invited my brothers and sister-in-laws, in-laws, to join. My brother and his wife ended up being six cousins. My children love the public groups. I have a son who loves science and he loves to see his relationship to famous scientists. So I go down, select science and technology. This will show my relationship to them. But as you can see, I'm seven cousins four times removed from the right brothers. Then I can view this relationship. 
This will show us our common ancestor, William Fowler and Sarah Neal. And it will show my descendancy from that couple, as well as over right. And then I can print this, download it as a PDF and print it, or I can view it on a virtual pedigree chart. These take a little while to build, but they're fun. So I'm going to select that. Let's see if I'm related to any president. So here's the list of US presidents that I'm related to and the relationship. So it's kind of fun. I'm twelve cousins with Barack Obama. And again, here's the common ancestor at the top. After my husband learned my brother was named after a Mayflower ancestor, he had the audacity to disprove our lineage, but Neener, neener, neener. I came to Relative Finder and found that I am a direct granddaughter of someone on the main flower, Richard Warren. So this shows Richard Warren and his wife and then my descendancy chart from them. And again, I can download the chart. I can view it on a virtual pedigree. We'll try this. So here we see Richard Warren. Coming up the Get it pretty small in order to ever see me. So this takes a while to build. But it's really fun if you want to track your descendancy. I'm not going to apply to the Society of Mayflower Descendants without researching this, but it's fun to see and it's a great place to start my research. So if you're an average person who's not going to be chosen for finding your roots or who do you think you are, but you'd like a peek at the possibilities, Relative Finder is for you. If you'd like more tips on genealogy, please visit my website on genealogy.com or subscribe to my YouTube channel. Okay. okay, so that's Relative Finder, and it, it is a fun site. It's, um, again, it works with Family Search, so how accurate Family Search is, or your tree on Family Search is, is how accurate this is going to be. <laughs> so that's just a little disclaimer there. And um, if changes are made to your tree, like probably what happened to me, and a key person is disconnected, then perhaps you might not have those same relatives as you did a week ago. <laughs> so um, that is that. And that is it for my class. I just, um, um, I just think descendancy research is a great uh, option for people who really want to have that experience of researching and finding new people. Um, and if you have so much that's already done on your direct line, this is a great way to do it. So do you have any questions? Okay, well thank you and good luck on your research. <laughs>